When you're going to build a new home, one of the most basic and most important decisions you're going to make is about the type of foundation to use. If you get your foundation right, everything is going to go well for your long term. On the other hand, with a bad foundation, no matter what you do in the build, you're going to suffer with your house. While for foundation in the southern areas, we not often see full in-ground foundations as we see in the northern zones. Well, that's mainly because we don't have a frost line and code does not dictate that we need to dig down several feet. So, in south, the two most common foundation types are Slab on grade foundation Pier and beam foundation so, in our today's video, we're going to discuss the pier and beam foundation. While knowing about the various factors where we prefer pier and beam foundation, the first question is about the type of soil. In places where flooding is a possible concern and soils with a high clay content are susceptible to swelling and shrinking pier and beams foundations are a preferred choice. If we go with a slab grade foundation on soils with high clay content, we'll experience a lot of movement over the years. So, we'll start with what is pier and beam foundation. Pier and beam foundation, also known as braced frame foundation includes piers that sunk down deep through the clay soil onto the bedrock. Piers are typically concrete stems that go underneath the ground and extend a bit above the ground level. Along with the pier, it includes perimeter beam that takes the entire loading of the foundation slab and transfers it to the piers. Now the concrete slab rests on top of the perimeter beam and the slab inside our conditioned crawl space is also able to stay constant. Now let's briefly see some components in pier and beam foundation. The floor joists overall design is comprised with plywood to form the underlayment. A pier and beam building is made up of plinths attached to the ground and a central beam around 4 to 6 feet in diameter and supports the plywood subfloor. When it comes to the car porch, these foundations are often a concrete on grade structure. The piers may hold wood pillars that run up to the rafters. In any instance, the home's top level is timber and sits a little height above the earth level, known as the crawl space, before being finished. It is a kind of foundation used instead of a slab or cellar footing. The crawl space provides for simple access to utilities as well as the addition of an air insulating material between both the flooring and the earth below it. Let's now see some material we can use for pier and beam foundation. You'll find pier and beam foundation in different materials like Reinforced concrete beam and reinforced concrete piers concrete or cinder blocks piers and concrete slab foundation wooden or lumber beams and steel posts or steel piers wooden or lumber beams with wooden posts and concrete footing cost of a pier and beam foundation the average cost of installing a pier and column system is approximately ten dollars per square meter in most cases because pier and beam construction has become somewhat of a niche requirement in the US the pricing may vary. One should expect to spend between $7,050 and $13,600 for a property of typical size. Let's now see some of the advantages of this type of foundation. The benefits of pier and beams foundation include giving an additional protective layer for the underneath the home. It raises the dwellings above the ground to keep them safe from flooding and dampness. A house built on pier and beam foundation is easy to insulate. It is easier to fix in case of some damage or a repair is needed. Modifications to the foundation, like adding or extending your house is a bit easy in this type of foundation. It provides a crawl space between both the home and the ground level below it. 
the construction of the foundation is simple and cost-effective. The construction of pier and beam foundations on sloping soil is possible, and pipes and cables are easily accessible. Now at the end we'll see at some disadvantages. It can become unlevel at some time due to differential settlement. Unlike slab foundation, it may not be a stable foundation to walk on, especially in older homes. It makes floors droop, groan, and bounce and is poor ventilation. It accommodates rodents and insects which are harmful. That's all about our today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like button.